Jackson. So let us discuss. Now, how do you see the Ravens handling a interesting situation with Lamar Jackson? This is not a no-brainer. Like, I don't agree with paying anybody a 10-year contract. I know it's not really a 10-year contract. There's a lot of funny money in it. But still, the idea of it could be a 10-year contract, I just, I don't, I would never do that. But it's not nearly the same level of layup line that Mahomes is when you compare and contrast him and Lamar Jackson. So my thoughts on this, you've got Maritime Robbers, Lane Departure, and Yogi Berra. All right, those three things, and we will combine everything together just like that and uh, see what happens. Now, A... Uh, you got to love the very, I think the word is prodigious, appetite that many in the media had. Now, I'm featuring Chad Johnson here, but I could have featured a number of other people in the mainstream media establishment of football. Never satisfied, uh, never satisfied, and just digesting what Mahomes got. Because then it's like, okay, we talked about that enough. People are bored with that. And so let's smell ourselves a little bit and find out who's next. And so it instantaneously, right, in just a blink of an eye, you're trying to find out who's going to get up on top of the podium and get the big cartoon check, the big oversized check. And uh, you know, this is like this little tug of war game, right? You're holding a rope and you're tugging. You're tugging against other media people to try to be the one that gets it right and who's going to get paid and all that stuff. And uh, we, we see this all the time. And these are often silly debates, and that's what we do in sports radio, often silly debates. But in terms of Lamar Jackson's situation, this is an apples and oranges type of conversation because when you compare Mahomes and Lamar Jackson, you say, well, ah, forget about it, is what you say. Forget about it. Now, don't put the cart ahead of the horse with Lamar Jackson. Both are MVPs, that's true. But when you look at the resume of Patrick Mahomes, there's something that stands out compared to Lamar Jackson. And it's something you cannot overlook, and especially when it's time to write that big oversized check. Mahomes, the MVP season a couple years ago, he then backed that up by delivering the knockout punch, bam, 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 in the postseason. This playoff run, he had 10 touchdowns, two interceptions, averaged 300 yards per game, Didn't actually play particularly great for a large chunk of the Super Bowl, but in the end, thanks to the incompetence of Richard Sherman, uh, he was able to take advantage of that and make the big play, and we can debate whether he should have been the MVP in the Super Bowl, whether it was Damian Williams, but he got the award, and so that's what the history books will show. But you, you look at the comeback, the Chiefs were down big, and Deshaun Watson gagged, played terribly the last three quarters of that game. That opened the door taking advantage of the incompetence of the Texans. And the Chiefs stormed back, one of the great comebacks in playoff history. And then they got past the Tennessee Titans and the 49ers in the Super Bowl. So in five playoff games, two years in the playoffs, five playoff appearances, Mahomes, he has passed the acid test. He has passed the eyeball test. He has passed the smell test. All of it. Right? He's not counterfeit. This is the real deal here. And to take a term, to compare these two, if you take a term from Maritime Robbers, also known by their better name, Pirates, uh, Maritime Robbers are Pirates, Lamar Jackson, who's on the other side of this conversation, in the playoffs, he has been sailing under false colors in the postseason. You know, the legend of pirates is oftentimes they would put up a friendly flag on their boat so the other people with the boats would say, oh, those aren't evil pirates. Uh, they're, they're friendly. Uh, and, and they turned out, it was that's where the term sailing under false flag comes from, if you didn't know that. Anyway, I just love dumb stuff like that. So not only was Action Jackson a playoff quarterback, but he was terrible. He was also terrible. And there's really no other way to say it. The Ravens have been in two playoff games. They're 0-2. And in those two games, Lamar Jackson, you could you could interchange him and a bag of trash uh, the first three quarters of both of those games. And then Lamar was able to put up some empty numbers in the fourth quarter, fatten up his stats, enhance his yardage total. So the people that didn't watch the game or didn't pay attention think, well, he wasn't that bad. 
fact, he had a record-setting yardage total in the Ravens' loss to the Tennessee Titans. But he's completed barely 50% of his passes in the postseason, and his touchdown-to-interception ratio is 3-3. Three to three. Again, Mahomes, just this year, Mahomes was 10-2. to two. 10 touchdowns, 2 interceptions. And Lamar Jackson averaging less than 6.5 yards per attempt. Average is 7. All right, average is 7. He was at 6.4. And the biggest, biggest problem, turnovers. Seven turnovers. He had the three interceptions, but four fumbles. All right, so seven total turnovers in two playoff games and also sacked 11 times. And that is a lethal combo is what it is. Now, part B of this, my advice to the Ravens, how do you handle this? Because Lamar... Made me look like a donkey. He was much better than I ever imagined in the regular season, but he was the same old Lamar in the playoffs. So what is the advice here? What is some 10-cent overnight talk radio advice? All right? My advice, lane departure. All right? Change lanes. Be very leery. Do not be in the fast lane. That's No, no, no. You're not in the fast lane. I would not open up the pocketbook right now. Now, if Lamar continues to play like this in the regular season, the Ravens are going to have no choice. They're going to have to pay him a lot of money, but they don't have to do it right now. And they can drive in the slow lane. It's the same advice I give the Cowboys with Dak Prescott. Sounds like they're listening to me. And we'll see if that continues here. Dak hasn't gotten paid and certainly won't get paid now because his asking price, you got to think, is going to go up. But this is about Lamar Jackson. There is no need... To rush into this. It's kind of like when you start dating somebody. Most people are like, all right, let's not run off and get married. Let's just enjoy the dating. And then eventually we will end up in wedded bliss at some point down the line. And and that's what you got to look at if you're the Ravens. And you don't run into this thing. You don't, you've got to reap the benefits if you're Baltimore of the rookie contract. And If you're a farmer, you treat the rookie contract of a quarterback who's good like a cow, and you got to milk the cow is what you got to do there. And the Ravens, they've got Lamar, if my math is correct here, they've got him under contract for the next two years, all right, two years on the rookie deal, and then they've got the fifth-year option. So that part of this story is a no-brainer. Is what it is. The window to win for Baltimore is between now and the final year, which I guess would be, you got 2020, 2021, 2022. So the 2022 season would be the last year of the window, and then you got to make your decision. And and most of these guys don't even go into the fifth year. So it's at least the next two. I would say three. I would say three. And... Lamar, he's got to walk the walk, and it's it doesn't matter whether you think he's the greatest quarterback in the world. Actions are always more important than words, and his playoff performance has stunk. He has been rotten. He has been rotten in the playoffs, and yeah, he was the breakout star, Lamar Jackson, last year. Congratulations, but you got to have an encore, and you really don't even have to have an encore. I would imagine his numbers are going to go down. He had a career year. I think his regular season numbers will go down a little bit, but it's all about the playoffs. It's all about the playoffs. Because even if he puts up the same numbers or better in the regular season, it ain't going to matter if he goes out there and pukes all over the field for the Ravens in the playoffs. All right, last word here. So we know the NFL is a notoriously fickle industry. And it, it reminds me of a quote from the late, great Yogi Bear, one of his iconic quotes. It gets late early out there. And... I know the the other argument. The other argument, devil's advocate is argument. Well, it's only been two games. You can't rip a guy only after two playoff games. But again, it gets late early out there. And that means that Lamar Jackson, you build your reputation. Once you build your reputation, that reputation is so important because once you have a bad one, it, it's it's terrible. It's kind of like in in marketing, first impressions, right? First in the mind is important. You don't have to have the, the greatest product. But you have to be first in the mind. And Lamar Jackson, in the mind of football fans, has sucked in the playoffs. He's a painter, but he's not Picasso or Michelangelo or Van Gogh. Instead, he's been a choke artist is what he's been. He's been like a finger painter, that kind of thing. He's been tentative, hesitant, uncertain, all qualities you don't want from a playoff quarterback. And to avoid Boondoggle Boulevard... The Ravens, who were 
absolutely loaded. They had every advantage you could possibly want, home field advantage, everything in their favor. They were coming off the bye, and they went out there and pooped the bed. And he really went out there and pooped the the bed. So if you're on the hamster wheel of mediocrity in the postseason, Guys like that don't set records in contracts. It doesn't happen. The postseason is a different kind of cat and mouse game than the regular season. And only Lamar, only Lamar Jackson can change this. Nobody else. It's up to him. And I know there's a bunch of guys, oh, they're probably right now sending me tweets about excuses and and calling in to defend him and all that. But Lamar also plays a style of football where he's like he's like two in one. He's a running back and a quarterback. And he's like a crash test dummy. So the hybrid running back quarterback, which is not the ingredient, those are not the ingredients for long-term success. Uh, They're not. Short-term success, absolutely. Long-term success, eh, 